the backroom team running the core curling side. Dave Punch chipping it in. Cross intended for Shane Fitzgibbon, but knocked out by Jim Cashman for Cork. And what this game so badly needs right now is a couple of Limerick scores to bring them right back into it. Plenty of time still to go, 20 minutes. So Paddy Kelly, will he go for a point? The side still within striking distance of Cork. And he opts for the sensible course and puts it over the bar. So two goals between the teams now. Tomas Mulcahy drilling it down towards John Fitzgibbon. Dave Punch. Limerick lacking a little shape at the moment. The cohesion gone. Cork now trying to press on their advantage. Here's Kieran Kingston. And he'll be going for a hat-trick at this stage. Not held up there by Donny Barry. To the unmarked Dave Punch. Who tried to rally the forces. Down towards Pat McCarthy. It's touched on towards Anthony Carmody. Now can he get inside the defence? Jim Cashman swept it back. And it comes to the safe goalkeeping of uh, Jer Cunningham. Terence Kenny towards Carmody if he can turn inside Cashman going for a point scored a point from that position against Waterford he's narrowed the gap down to five points first score then for the under 21 Anthony Carmody <laughs> Kevin Hennessy beating Liam O'Donoghue Unmarked players to his right and to his left. That was Tony O'Sullivan sweeping into the attack and unerringly putting it between the posts. A third point for the Napierschik player. Tommy Quaid, who's been the Limerick goalkeeper for the last 11 years, fucking that one out. Pat Harknett judges it nicely with Dennis Walsh. Down to Kevin Hennessy, with the fans already chanting, you'll never walk alone, but there's plenty of time left. As Joe Hegarty robs Kevin Hennessy. Jim Cashman. And his brother Tom running from right half back onto that one, down towards John Fitzgibbon, who was scooping low to pick it up. Has the chance now. The post in front of him, down towards Teddy McCarthy. Mickey Mullins is lurking as well. Here's McCarthy. Mullins away to his right, off balance, but brilliantly stopped by Craig. Back to Teddy McCarthy, however. On towards Tomas Mulcahy as they try to build up the lead. Tomas Mulcahy, but it's stopped by Jimmy Carroll. And the referee saw a foul, and he awards a free out to Limerick. But what another very fine save that was by Tommy Quaid, off the stick of John Fitzgibbon. 3-9 to 1-9 the position, Cork in front. A place in the Munster final in three weeks' time at stake. Tom Cashman takes it out of danger, having been pushed and winning the free. So somebody having a little bit of fun with the score at the moment, making it 39 points to 19. Of course, it's 3-9 to 1-9, really. John Fenton making it Cork 3-10, Limerick 1-9. John Fenton has now scored five points. Joe Hagerty bursting through, getting inside Tony O'Sullivan's cover. Going for goal, stopped by Joe Cunningham, who makes a second good save in the space of two minutes. What a very consistent goalkeeper, as we were saying in the scene, see this scene that this man has been. Dave Punch, firing himself up for this line ball. Dangerously across the goal, it's a goal! From the line ball, Gary Kirby gives Limerick a bit of hope. So he went in past Jer Cunningham as Gary Kirby met it firmly from the sideline ball. So now there's just a goal and a point between the teams. And anything can happen yet in a hurling match as you all know so well. Has a goal and three points to his credit. 
3-10 then to 2-10. Donny Barry racing out to it first time ahead of John Fitzgibbon towards Mickey Mullins. Mullins sweeping it on to John Fitzgibbon. That's the winning of the game here. He's missed it. His first touch let him down. Then the ball was played delightfully into his path. He knows he's missed a chance that could well have sealed it for Cork. Tommy Quay tried to find Mick Ryan in the forward line. Cork once again trying to pile on the pressure. And it comes to Mick Ryan. Stopped by Pat Hartnett. Down to Terence Kenny here, just outside the 45 metre line. Coming back to Jer Hagerty. In it goes towards Shane Fitzgibbon. Pat McCarthy there too with Tom Cashman. Cashman, not such a good pass out from goal to Shane Fitzgibbon. The point. Shane Fitzgibbon's point means there's just two points between the teams. So, every one of the fans living on their nerves but enjoying it famously. It's there for the winning. By the same token, it's there for the losing. Gary Kirby with Dennis Mulcahy here. Eamon Cregan there, the Limerick coach. Wanting to keep the momentum going at this stage, sensing that victory is possibly within his grasp. 3-10 for Cork, 2-11 for Limerick. Dave Punch, the sideline taker. Towards Pat McCarthy. The catch by Shane Fitzgibbon and in the space of a minute Shane Fitzgibbon has scored a goal and a point Limerick lead and it all came from that sideline ball by Dave Punch it found Shane Fitzgibbon and he found the back of Jer Cunningham's net are the All-Ireland champions on their way out of the series Cork going for an unprecedented six in a row of successes Limerick's Jer Hagerty is the player down injured We have just over two minutes to go. Limerick 3-11, Cork 3-10. The free to Cork, John Fenton, can he level up the scores? He's put it wide, dramatically. Cork missing a late chance. The Limerick fans on their feet, the Cork fans can't believe what's happened. Cork had looked the better team for a long, long time out. But in the last couple of minutes, Limerick coming more and more into it and getting the vital scores at the right time. Jimmy Carroll, no-nonsense play, into Ger Hagerty. Cross towards Shane Fitzgibbon. Dennis Walsh, his marker. Caught behind by a point. Just a minute and a quarter to go. Well, we had a dramatic finale in Killarney last Sunday. We're getting a second dramatic finish to this monster contest as Park Kramer plays with one boot. Kevin Hennessy takes the free quickly to John Fenton. Towards the unmarked Dennis, uh, Tony O'Sullivan. Can this be the equalising score? No! He's right. The Limerick fans cheer. It's as good as a goal for them. 45 seconds to go. The Limerick supporters in that far crowd there roaring on their team, on their team to victory. Eamon Cregan, the manager, I wonder what he's doing out there. And he's certainly showing, I think the, a stone has been thrown in, but play continues. It comes to Dennis Mulcahy. The big question, of course, can Cork yet come back? We're a half a minute into injury time. Jim Cashman down towards Teddy Mulcahy, towards Kieran Kingston. The shot, the point, the level. The sides are level, and Kieran Kingston very much the hero. A score of two goals and a point in this match. So, for the second week running, are we to have a draw in the Munster Championship? Tommy Cray takes the puck out, a minute and a half now into injury time, and it's all over. And the sides finish level, unbelievably so, for the second week running, the Munster Championship unresolved. All four counties still there, but Cork and Libring giving us a tremendous battle. 
Kieran Kingston, very much the hero of the hour for Cork, and Shane Fitzgibbon, the Limerick hero. But what a way to finish what's been a terrific contest. It finishes Cork, the champions, three goals and 11. Limerick, three goals and 11. Shane, there must be a feeling of disappointment in Limerick after losing it virtually in the last minute. Um, I don't think disappointment is the right word. Uh, you know, a lot of people wrote us off before we came down here today. I don't think a lot of people expect us to do as well as we did. We're back. We're not beaten yet. We're back again next day. So I don't think we're disappointed. You were the scoring hero in that second half, getting a goal and a point. You left it kind of late, really. Uh, yeah, but sure, the uh, score counted. That's what matters. And it's not, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter who scores as long as we score and we're still there the next day, you know. How do you think you came to lose the initiative at a vital time? Well, John, they say that two goals is, is a very dangerous lead no matter what they say in what sports we're playing whether it be it soccer gilly football or, or whatever two goals and i think we maybe we sat back in the laurels limerick had nothing to lose they threw everything at us um they got what, what i'd consider to be a soft goal and it brought them back into the game and um well that's it fair play to them they came back into the game and they came back at us Kerry, very much the cork hero you realize the game was well into injury time when you scored that point well i didn't realize uh, how much time was left but i saw him in Cregan behind the goal and People always think, so I presumed it nearly over, you know, so I just got the ball and I was looking for someone to pass it to, but <laughs> there was no one wrong, so I had to shoot. And just, be, just before that, Cork had missed two point chances. Antonio Sullivan and John Fenton as well, I think, was involved. So the responsibility was all on your shoulders. Well, uh, I, we missed a few chances, all right. Like, I think when we were up seven points, uh, we shouldn't have left him come back into the game, but uh, luckily the ball broke to me and I was praying after hitting it <laughs> and I went over. Eamon, what you've got in your hand here is what you picked up in the goal mouth just before the end of the match. Yes, Ger, um, there was tremendous excitement in the last few minutes and uh, objects came flying in from the, the crowd at the back on Tommy Quaid. Uh, a number of bottles hit the crossbar, but a billiard ball came flying in and very nearly hit him. And I think this, this tinker element that, that's there should be completely banned from the back of the goals. Is there no protection?